Hey, welcome back to Fat Mama Physics. This is actually part four out of 4.3 because I've decided to uh, make the last video into two parts because it was getting pretty long. The um, In this part, we're continuing on with uh, fractions in, um, and dealing with the denominator when we have um, a complex equation like this. Notice there are fractions and even variables in our fraction. So how do we deal with that? Okay, um, these ones are getting tougher and I did say I would do the first one and I changed the color of my pen so that it doesn't clash with all the other colors and the um, you will do F, you do F, and I will do G, okay? So G looks tough, hey? G will be fun, don't worry. Okay, let's get down to business, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself a little space, so maybe I'll cut myself there off, okay? And uh, let's do it. Okay, so again, we want to make sure we get rid of all our fractions by multiplying by the common denominator with which is 12 in our case so i'm going to do that to every term don't forget be fair to all your terms i'm going to multiply 12 there hey look plus one this is also a term you also have to multiply this one by 12 as well so don't forget that that's a common mistake and of course this term here by 12. This 12 cancels out with that 12, so then I will be left with, uh, let's see how much space I have. Let's see, okay, so I have then five, and in brackets, three minus y, okay? All right, what up? What's next? 12 times one, that's gonna be 12. Okay, I have 12 over here on the top times five. Now, four goes into 12 three times. So then I can cancel this 4, change this 12 to a 3 because I factor the 4 out. So I have 5 times 3 instead. So that's going to be 15. And then in brackets, 3y minus 2 in brackets. And then don't forget the plus 12. Okay, distribute. Now we need to get rid of all of these little... Um, we need to make sure we get all our variables to the same side of the equation. I'm going to do that by multiplying in my co uh, coefficient by distributing it inside the brackets. 15 distributes to 3y. 15 times 3 is 45y. 15 then times negative 2 is going to be negative 30. Okay, plus 12, that's still there. That's equal to 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times negative y is negative 5y. Okay, we got a whole whack ton of numbers and a whole whack ton of variables. So let's combine our like terms. I'm going to move... I'm actually going to make these a little bit simple here. So I'm going to combine this negative 30 with the 12. That's going to be 45y minus 30 plus 12. Uh, that's going to give us negative 18. Okay, negative 18 equals to 15 minus 5y. Okay, uh, now let's get the like terms together. I'm going to put the 5y to the other side by adding 5y here and adding 5y to the other side. It's getting a little busy though, so this goes away. And um, let's do this squiggle line here. Let's continue on this side. Okay, so 45y plus 5y down here gives me 50y. 50 reasons why, I'm just kidding. Minus 18. And then the other side, I have 15 left. Okay. Now peeling the onion or combining the, uh, the constants together, I'm going to add 18 here, add 18 here. I get 50y is equal to... 3 and 30, okay, 33. Last but not least, dividing both sides by a coefficient here. Then I am left with y is equal to 33 divided by 50. You might think there might be a way to, uh, to, to simplify it, but no, there's no way to simplify it. Then you can just leave this as your final answer. And that's it, okay? Uh, so yes, don't forget to include every term. Make sure to... Treat all your terms fairly, okay? Hey, guess what? It is your turn to try F, okay? 
Um, let me just erase this 15 so you can see the P there. Okay. All right. So this is a little trickier. You've got variables in your denominator. You've got this minus one term there. Uh, good time to try this question by pausing the video. Okay, let's go over it quickly. Notice the common denominator here is going to be 3P. I'm going to multiply everything by 3P including this negative 1 here. So in fact, I'm going to actually just sub 3p in there because 1 times 3p is just 3p. Um, times 3p over here as well. 3p cancels out with that 3p. 3p uh, then on this side here, let's write it out. Um, so here I got 3, I got a, sorry, that's a 2 and times in brackets 2 minus p equals um, minus 3p because I took 3p and I multiplied by negative 1, so then I have negative 3p. Over here, I have 3p. I know it's a little busy here. I have 3p divided by p. The p's here cancel. I am then left with 3 and in brackets p minus 1. Uh, let's see. It looks like we have to do some distributive property. So I have 3 times p, which is 3p. 3 times negative 1, which is minus 3, minus 3p, and, um, and this is going to be equal to 2 times 2 is 4, and then 2 times negative p is going to be negative 2p. Hey, look at this. I have 3p, and I subtract 3p, therefore these two just go away. And I'm now left with minus 3 is equal to 4, minus 2p. Okay, so um, since I have 2p already on this side of the equation, even though it's negative, you know what, I'll just, we just live with it, okay? We, let's move the 4 over by subtracting 4 on both sides of the equation. I get minus 3 minus 4, that's minus 7 equals to negative 2p. And the nice thing now is that I can multiply both sides by negative 1 to get rid of the negatives. And uh, then last but not least, dividing both sides by 2 to give me p is equal to 7 over 2. I just wrote it there in the corner uh, just because I might run out of space for this one here below, which then I am going to do with us together. However, 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 if you would like to try G as a challenge for yourself, this is the good chance to pause the video and try yourself. If not, we'll do it together. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in. I may need a little bit of space on the next page here, so it might get a little bit um, messy. Again, common denominator is going to be x squared. Okay, so I'm going to put x squared here. I'm going to change 1 times x squared is going to be still x squared. And I'm going to multiply x squared here in front. x squared cancels out with this x squared. So I get x plus 1 minus x squared here is going to be, I have x squared on top. I have x on the bottom. That means I can cancel out one of the x's, right? Because x squared is just x times x over x, one of the x's cancel out. This is your exponent laws you learned before. Hopefully you remember. Okay. So then that's not going to raise. I can get rid of one of the, one of these x's with the x here on the bottom. I am left with x times whatever is in here. Okay. So I get x and in brackets x plus one like that. Mmm. Doesn't look very pretty, does it? Well, then we still have to distribute this x into the brackets. So then we are left with x plus 1 minus x squared equals x times x. That's x squared, yes. x times 1, that is just x. And, uh, and now you might notice a few things. There's a few things on both sides of the equation that tend to go away. For example, I have x on this side of the equation. I have x on the other side of the equation. Those two can cancel out. So I can subtract x here, subtract x, and this x goes away, this x also goes away. And of course, that is assuming that um, that x is by itself and doesn't have any coefficients attached to it. So then if I kind of break it off here and continue my work here, I get this is gone now. I have 1 minus x squared. This is equal to just x squared because that x is gone. 
okay? You might be thinking, oh no, it's squared. That's okay, it's just a square. Uh, we got to put them together though, because remember, like terms always combine. So I'm going to add x squared here, plus x squared over here. This goes away, and I get 1 is equal to, now here's the tricky part, this is x squared plus x squared. It's not x squared times x squared, it's different. If I'm adding two x squareds together, that is the same as me adding their coefficients together, I get two x squares, okay? And now to solve for x squared, I still need to move away all my coefficients. So I'm going to divide both sides by two. I'm going to go down here, okay? So I get one half is equal to x squared because this two canceled out top and bottom. Now I'm going to divide, well, I can't divide anymore. I have x squared, just x squared. So what's the opposite operation of a squared? Aha, you take the square root, that's right. So here the square root and the square cancel, I am left with x is equal to the square root of a half. Okay, and that's it. You can convert it to a decimal if you want to. Uh, for me, it's not necessary because we, like I said before, we can always do something with the radical in case we have to continue working with it, right? So leaving it as such is fine. Hey, that was not that bad, hey? So guess what? You've done it. Good job. So um, you hopefully have enough tools to help you work on your own problems. Um, if you would like to, I have some special bonus material for Math 9. Um, it is beyond the curriculum, but if you want to really be very good with um, solving algebraic questions, you want to learn some extra tricks, they are coming up next in a new video. I will probably make it into two parts or one part, depending how long it is. Um, and uh, it's optional, mater optional material, but watch it if you like. And uh, it might be bonus on the test. I don't know. Anyhow, good luck with your practice. I wish you the best. Fat Mama Physics, signing out.